<laughs> okay. Um, so here we are with question five. It is it is given that k is a positive constant by sketching the graphs of y equals 40 minus x squared and y equals k ln x on a single diagram to show that has exactly one node. Right. Well, we, these are this is just sketching some steps. Um, am I right in thinking you were given axes? Yeah. They were pre-drawn. No, you yeah. had to draw them. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You had to draw your own axes. Um, yeah. Right, we know about the graph of y equals x squared. So 14 minus x squared is going to be y equals x squared. Turned upside down, flexed it in the x-axis, and then lifted up 14 units. So we should have a graph that does something like that. It needs to be approximately symmetrical. Now it is. Um, and if you feel like it, you can label 14, but you're not going to get and the extra marks for doing that. There we go. That's that's that one sorted. Why do you like it? No, they, they didn't mind in this case. I think we should have done that. Right. This, the other graph. Shh. The other graph was K on X. Now that's going to be a natural log graph that is stretched scale factor K. Well, when you stretch a natural log graph, it doesn't actually make that much difference to it. You're stretching it out that way. Uh, we just want to have a graph that does that, because that's what natural log graphs do. Um, and, and this would just keep on going up at a, an increasingly slower rate. Um, that would be it. That would be y equals k and an x. And the question said, show that there is just one root, didn't it? Yeah, show that the equation has exactly one root. So, well, these two only cross at one point. It's quite clear from our diagram that they only cross at one point. So we're going to identify that and say exactly one root. And, uh, and that's good as our three marks. Quite nice. Um, it, to get the third mark, these two graphs have to be correct in the first quadrant. If you went some way away from that third mark elsewhere, you could get away with it. But they have to be correct in that quadrant to get the third mark. And it's quite important that, that a natural log graph, even one multiplied by a constant k, does not touch the y-axis. So you couldn't get the credit for your natural log graph if it touched the y-axis. You have to be careful about that um, as it went down that direction. Neither does it change direction up here. So you have to be careful you didn't end up looping back in yourself up there. Um, the lower six just did the core one exam and had to draw a root x. And it's the same kind of thing. You need to make sure that a root x graph doesn't end up curving back around again. One final bit of advice on the drawing of the graphs. Um, it's you're not going to gain or lose marks for it, probably, but it is neat to label your axes and <coughs> show the origin. It's, it's, yeah, it's speed-esque. Um, the other thing to say is they gave you a lot of space to do this, so don't draw a tiny little graph up in the corner of the space, Jess. Okay. You got four marks for um, Part two of this asked us, um, it said that the real root, this, this root that is there, is denoted by A, uh, alpha. So that is the root in part two of 14 minus x squared equals 3L and x. Find by calculation the pair of consecutive integers between which alpha lies. Now, there are, there are various ways you can do this, but we've talked about this, we've done this, and we've said that the way to sort this out is to create a function that makes this equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let f of x be the function that is 14 minus x squared minus 3 ln x, in which case the root is when f of x is zero. Okay, now by setting it up like that, that now means I need to find a pair of consecutive integers where there is a change of sign. And that will identify where my root is. And looking at my graph, 
Well, I kind of know that that this this is root 14, isn't it? And root 14 is somewhere between three and four. And this point here, well, I don't I don't know exactly where it is, but it's bigger than one. Um, in fact, it is one. So I know that this this point lies somewhere between bigger than it's bigger than one, and it's it's less than root 14, and that's where my root is. So I'm going to try a few values. I'm probably not going to try one in there because that doesn't make any sense. So let's try f of two and f of three and f of four. I want to expect between two of those to find that the sign changes. So on the calculator, and remember, we, you know, we talked about this as well. You can put this in in such a way as to just have to change a small amount in the calculator when you do it. You could even if you wanted to do, uh, if you wanted to do that thing with the um, remove the table of values and putting the function in, it's probably overkill for doing something like this. But you could do it. 14 minus 2 squared minus 3 times the natural log of 2 is going to give me 7.9206. If I change that value to 3, and I'm just doing that by scooting back through the equation as it's in my calculator. Change the value 1.704. How many places have I done that? Two. And uh, if I put four in, I'm hoping that this is going to give me my change of sign. And that gives me minus 6.1589. And, and there we go. I've got my change of sign. And, and remember, again, this in this question, you didn't lose a mark if you didn't do it, but we're going to be really careful about this. And we're going to say, um, between 3 and 4, f of x is continuous and has a change of sign. Therefore, alpha is between 3 and 4. And you could write it how you want to. Alpha is between 3 and 4. They're the pair of consecutive integers that contain alpha. That's made really super certain by writing that bit about it being continuous. We make sure that we're going to get all the marks for that. Then, use the iterative formula. And, and this, you did really well on this. Loads of people got loads of marks. Um, Making sure that alpha is correct two decimal places. So, well, where are we going to start? The roots between three and four. Three. We'll start at three. That, that seems a sensible thing to do. X n plus one is the square root of fourteen minus three, and then X n. They didn't even ask us to derive that. We're going to start at three. Remember. In the calculator, we can do this by typing in 3 and pressing equals. And then we're going to type in the natural log, uh, sorry, the square root of 14 minus 3 ln ants. Close the bracket. That gives me 3.2717. I'm, uh, I'm supposed to be doing this to two decimal places, it says. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work through my answers to... Well, at least three, but I'll, I'll do it to four. I then get 3.2317. X4 is 3.2374. I'm pretty sure it's going to be 3.2. The next one is 3.2366. We've had two consecutive values that round to 3.24 now, to two decimal places. If we really feel we want to, we can do another one. We've got 3.2367. We've now had two consecutive values, three consecutive values, that round to 3.237. So I think we're pretty sure that it's 3.24 to two decimal places. 
Okay, and your argument here, there are four marks just for doing this, but it, you have to be consistent all the way through it. Have a suitable starting value, and then your values have to make sense along the way. <laughs> Jack's um, first value was wrong, but it, it, it recovered it. Uh. That was right, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. He typed it in code later on. Even the mighty make mistakes occasionally. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, is that the end of the. Um, yeah, right, okay. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, that is that's right. Right. Sorry, but that's just. <laughs> 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 <laughs>